Uh, okay, so in the first part of this talk, um, I will present our paper that was presented at ACL this year uh, that tries to answer the question, uh, do context-aware translation models pay the right attention? And so we asked ourselves the following research questions in this paper. One, in context-aware translation, what context is useful to this ambiguity hard translation, such as ambiguous pronouns or word senses? And two, are context-aware machine translation models paying attention to the relevant context or not? And three, if not, can we encourage them to do so? So uh, for the first question, we conducted a user study to collect the supporting context that human translators use. And to do so, we asked 20 professional English to French translators to select the correct translation when given two possible choices and then highlight all the supporting context words that they use to achieve their answer. And we performed the study for two tasks. So the first task is pronoun anaphora resolution, where the translator chooses the correct gendered French pronoun that is associated with a neutral English pronoun. And the second task is word sense disambiguation, where they choose the French translation for polysemous English word. And we gave translators varying amounts of the previous sentences in the English source side and the French target side as context. Then we analyzed when translators were able to answer accurately and with high confidence, depending on how much and what context was given. And we also analyzed the supporting context words that were selected by the translators by looking at where these words are, whether it is an English source or a French target word, and features of the words such as part of speech and the syntactic dependencies. And you can look to um, our paper, which is available online for the full analysis in detail. Uh, but, um, to, uh, as like the main uh, takeaways from our analysis for pronouns, we found that the previous context sentences are useful, especially on the target side. And we find that humans especially rely on the pronoun antecedent, or in other cases, the other reference of the pronoun in the target side. And the same co-reference chain in English does not seem to be as useful because the chain in French can carry information about the gender. Whereas in English, um, it is ambiguous. It has no information about the gender. Now, during word sense disambiguation, the current sentence in either language is often sufficient. For example, um, charme in French means the quality of being charming, while porte bonheur is a good luck charm. So these are two different things. And we find that words that indicate the role or the meaning of the polysemous word in English are useful to disambiguate. Moreover, the source and target sites often contain an equal amount of semantic load that is needed for word system disambiguation, which is why here either sites are as useful. And after our user study, we annotated the supporting context for 14,000 examples of pronoun anaphora resolution to English to French, and we released a SCAT dataset. So next, to evaluate whether models pay attention to the relevant context or not, we quantify how much model attention is aligned with SCAT. So for our experiments, we used a standard transformer translation model, but instead of only taking the data sentence by sentence as we do for sentence level translation, we incorporate the five previous source and target sentences as the context by simply concatenating them to the current sentence that is then fed into the model. And we use 14 million parallel English to French sentences from the open subtitles data set for training. So to quantify the alignment between human and model attentions, we construct vectors that represent the SCAT annotations and the model annot attentions while translating the ambiguous pronoun. Then taking the SCAT vector and the model attention vector, we first sort the tokens by the decreasing model attention weights. Then we look at the rank of the first supporting context token from SCAT in the sorted vector. So in this example, the alignment score is two. And the more attention the model assigns to the supporting context, the lower the alignment score. Uh, we also use two additional alignment metrics, which um, are included in our paper. And so using this metric, we compare the alignment score of a uniform distribution uh, with the alignment score of our model attention against the SCAT annotations. And we find that uh, for the model attention, uh, oh yeah, for the model attention, we measure the alignment with SCAT for the encoder self-attention, the decoder cross-attention, and the decoder self-attention. And we find that the alignment between the encoder self-attention and SCAT is slightly better than the alignment score of some normal uh, uniform distribution. 
However, attentions in the decoder layers have very low alignment. And in general, uh, we find that context-aware translation models do not seem to pay attention to the relevant context, which may explain why they're limited in translating ambiguous discourse phenomena. So we therefore use SCAT to increase the model human alignment. Uh, to do so, we train a context-aware model on open subtitles with a standard negative log likelihood loss. And we additionally sample from SCAT during training to introduce the attention regularization loss. Uh, so the intuition behind this is that uh, during training, we encourage models to pay attention to words that were selected by humans from our user study. And for evaluation, we measure model performance using corpus, level blue, and comet. However, words such as ambiguous pronouns represent only a small portion of all words in corpora. So corpus level metrics such as blue and comet may not clearly capture improvements in translating discourse phenomena which is why we also compute the mean word F measure of translations of the ambiguous pronouns with respect to the reference pronouns. And we also perform contrastive evaluation where we measure how often the model assigns the higher probability to the correct translation than a translation where the ambiguous pronoun is incorrect. And we find that attention regularization improves translation across all four metrics, especially the ones that are targeted to pronouns. Therefore, regularizing attention with SCAT can effectively improve ambiguous pronoun translation. We also find that uh, better attention alignment with SCAT after attention regularization, which shows that the model is indeed able to learn uh, how to pay attention to the right uh, context. And we can also see that the model with attention regularization assigns high attention to the words report and hapa from our original example when they are translating the ambiguous pronoun and then is able to translate the pronoun correctly. So this suggests that attention regularization with SCAT can encourage models to pay the right attention even to unseen examples and thus allowing them to translate the ambiguous words correctly. And uh, you can find more details about the um, experiments that demonstrate uh, that models with attention regularization rely more on the supporting context that have been selected by humans, that regularizing the encoder self-attention gives the largest improvements in translation performance compared to regularizing other types of model attention, and that the performance on versus disambiguation does not improve much when we supervise the model attention using rationales for pronoun and alpha resolution. And you can find the details for these experiments in our paper as well. Uh, so this concludes the first part of um, my talk for um, this work. Uh, so I can pause a little bit if anybody has questions 